Hey guys, you're Tao K here. Today I'll review an anime no one has ever heard of, Girls in Panties. I mean Panzer. Panzer. I just be my I just be my Girls and Pans is about a group of normal high school girls not knowing which club to join. Aw, oh, it's one of those. Not just about that sense of long, before anyone expects me to bash the show to oblivion, let me surprise you by saying I actually quite enjoyed it. Shit, didn't expect that now, did you? As you guys will know from experience, I am really skeptical about watching any anime revolving around high school students, since most of the time they are about as good as watching a documentary about paint, aka, it's fucking boring. Girls and Pans on the other hand at first sent me mixed signals. After watching the show, I thought nothing of it, it just seemed like the generic slice of life anime featuring cute girls doing cute things. Although after thinking about it, it's actually far better than your average anime. Despite this series being a slice of life, Girls in Pangeon had quite a concrete plot. Schools from around the world compete in a sport called Tankery, a dignified martial art that helps girls hone their grace, chivalry, and femi- 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 fuck. Miho and Nishizumi, the protagonist of the story, has no idea of what club to join, cause joining clubs are always important. Cough cough. The only club that I joined in school was the Going Straight Home Club, which, you know what, it was bloody amazing. Miho's two close friends, Hana and Saori, however, decide to join the Tankery Club. This forces a predicament with Miho since after experiencing a traumatic event, she is very reluctant to join Tankery. This caused a bit of drama to form in the group. Whoa, drama? There's drama? No, there isn't. Having to believe in the bonds of friendship, Hana and Sari decide to drop Tankery and follow in whatever club Miho decides to join. However, after believing in the heart of the cards, I mean the bonds of friendship, Miho ends up joining Tankery anyway to support her friends. Cause fuck logic up the ass. By now, you're probably thinking, how the hell is this an above average anime? Let me explain. The tank battles to boot simply are outstanding. You could tell that all the characters show a great understanding of Tankery, since all the battles had very engaging and unique strategies. To be honest, even I didn't expect some parts to happen, since normally when the main character is backed up into a corner, there's usually some massive asshole to save them. <coughs> However, in Girls and Panda, this doesn't happen, which quite surprised me. The characters actually retreat when they are in a losing confrontation and actually lose some battles. Shocking, right? And even the tanks themselves play a part to their tactics to a degree. Smaller tanks are more agile, which means they can maneuver and travel faster. Tanks that have longer battles have longer ranges, and big tanks can take more hits but travel slower. And people said size doesn't matter. <laughs> Wait, I'm Asian. Fuck. But in all seriousness, the tank battles were nothing less than spectacular, since all the battles had their own distinct terrain, ranging from urban cities to snowfields. The strategies used were very unorthodox, which made it very interesting and engaging to watch, since you were just waiting what crazy plan they would come up with next. They even conducted a plan at one point to have a tank on top of an enemy tank so that the enemy tank couldn't shoot their tank. Yes, you heard that correctly. These unpredictable and even crazy tactics made for a very fun and action-packed watch. If anything, the plot of Girls in Panzer was executed beautifully, all the episodes had some sort of meaning to them since they were working towards a common goal. The only episode where they didn't do anything was the first, however, that episode was just setting up the plot and the premise, which is essential in the progression of the story. At least there wasn't any bad scenes. God damn it. To conclude, Girls and Panzer was not your average slice of life anime where cute girls do cute things. Although it is very reminiscent and has all the same aspects, it's like k but with motherfucking tanks. Motherfuckers. As for the characters, well, this is the part where the series falls flat on its face. The characters were just characters, it felt as if they had no real purpose. They tried to portray the characters with having real life problems and issues, but this resulted in having little to no effect on the overall story, which in turn slowed down the momentum of the series. Most characters, while entertaining enough, serve no real purpose to the story, since only Miho's group were the only ones actually capable of doing something. Miho is the only character to receive any real development, and even then it plays out in a predictable manner. She's your shy, typical high school girl having no real distinct aspects except that she considers her friend's feelings more than anyone else. Miho progresses from a quiet girl who slowly becomes a more confident leader and opens up to more people. Her breakthrough in her character is when she comes up with ingenious plans and tactics to win battles, despite the fact that she has actually no idea what she is talking about, kind of like what I do in my reviews. Wait, what? 
As for other characters, we have Saori who is a popular tsundere, Hana a gentle and composed girl who has the biggest tits on screen, Marco who is a genius girl but chooses to be lazy, and finally Yukari who has an obsession with tanks but also wants to get senpai to notice her. Even though these girls were the main characters of the series, they felt like supporting characters, to the point where everyone except Mio could be each described from one word. Useless, 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 and bitch. The roles of the supporting characters were non-existent, it seemed like their only task was to shoot the ground, drive away, and get shot at, with the exceptional retaliation from time to time. Overall, the characters were probably the weakest link to the series. The only reason I could see them were for filling up more tanks and of course, pedophile bait. However, back to the pros, the animation of the series was excellent, especially the well-rendered CG that was done for each of the tanks. The motion and the actions of the tanks themselves during the battle scenes were visually appealing to look at. Each model tank had their own distinct look and each were very detailed done to the paint and screws. And even throughout the battle scenes, the CG was well kept and no scenes felt under budget constraint, unlike Evangelion, where the last two episodes looked as if they were hand-drawn by a 5-year-old. For the character designs, well, what can I say? It was Moe. Each girl had their own unique feature whether or not they be flat-chested or big-breasted. Although one thing I really did like about the designs were the uniforms of each captain. They all had an elaborate military style which complemented the style of the show. The soundtrack of this anime consisted of militaristic tunes and marches that really fit well during the action scenes. The voice acting was well done with great expression and over the top comedy. Surprisingly, none of the girls had any annoying voices which really should be praised considering this is a slice of life anime. The opening was a light hearted and happy song which really should be expected from this type of series. The ending however really surprised me, it was a really catchy J-pop where I just couldn't help myself from joining in with the beat. For my enjoyment, well, this is where it gets quite confusing. As I mentioned before, while watching the series, I just thought of it as an average anime. After finishing it, however, I realized that it was far better than the usual cute girls doing cute things. This anime had an actual plot. Given that the plot was nowhere near a masterpiece, Girls and Panzer had more of a plot than most Slice of Life anime, heck, even more than 90% of the romance comedy that I've seen. So really, Girls and Panzer you could say is one of the unique Slice of Life anime that breaks apart from the usual cute girls doing cute things, but instead is cute girls in motherfucking tanks. To reiterate, Girls and Panzer is a unique take on the Slice of Life genre where the series actually develops a plot, unlike most of the Moe shit out there. The positives of the series were it had a great use of CG, it was a new take on the Moe genre and it had an actual plot. The negatives were it had some cliche characters and some irrelevant issues dealing with the characters. The scores that I gave it were Plot 8.5, Characters 5, Animation 9, Music 8, Enjoyment 8.5, with an overall score of 8. So, do I recommend this anime? Well, if you want to break from all the generic size of life shows, The Girls and Panzer is a unique take on the Moi genre and will definitely exceed your expectations. If you like action, the tank battles in the series were performed beautifully. It never assumes that the audience is 3 years old, unlike some anime where apparently people die when they are killed. If you still don't know whether or not you should watch it, I'd just say watch it because of the tank battles. However, if you're a person who just doesn't want anything to do with the Moi genre, this review would have been a waste of your time, and I'm sorry. I'm not actually sorry. For those who have seen the show, what were your thoughts on it? Do you agree that Girls and Panzer was a unique take on the Moi genre, or am I just crap with viewers spouting out bullshit? I hope you guys enjoyed this review as much as I enjoyed writing it. For a future review, leave a comment below, and why not give me some feedback while you're at it. Anyway, more videos soon, I'm Diotaoke, and I'll catch you all later.